A year ago today, the Supreme Court made the bad call to overturn Roe vs Wade, taking away abortion rights for millions of American women. At the time, privacy advocates got a little concerned because we now live in an age where our private messages and location information is stored somewhere up in a cloud, so it could potentially be used against us, especially in situations where we're seeking reproductive health care. Fast forward to today and we're witnessing the ramifications of that decision. In this video, I'm going to look at what's happened in the world of social media, data and privacy in the last year, what the American government has done to try and protect people, and what we can do about it. Let's start with social media. Before Roe had even been overturned, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and TikTok had all been allowing fear-driven ads containing misinformation to circulate on their platform, making them, and this is the technical term, a Scrooge McDuck amount of money. After Roe was overturned, Meta banned staff from discussing it and deleted internal messages that mentioned the word abortion. This divided opinions more than pineapple on a pizza at a funeral. Some said it was censorship, which is very unlike Meta, and others didn't like it but said that it was a private business and they could do whatever they wanted. Whichever side you fall down on, it happened. And credit where the bare minimum is due, Meta did offer to cover travel expenses for out-of-state abortions. Meta then turned their attention to us, the product, and immediately removed posts about abortion pills on both Facebook and Instagram. They then blamed a bug when people complained their posts were being hidden from public view on Instagram. Meta briefly blamed the FDA for confusing them, saying that they weren't sure if Roe being overturned meant that the mailing of abortion pills was now illegal, but they quickly dropped that line as they realised it wasn't a great look. Instead, Meta began banning people who offered to send women abortion pills in the post, saying that it was against their terms of service to buy, sell, trade, gift, request or donate pharmaceuticals. In that same month, Meta changed their privacy policy so you'd get a maximum of 10 strikes if you tried to sell guns on their platform. This was up from three strikes. Have you heard of a more American privacy policy in your life? Facebook spokesperson Andy Stone then confirmed that some posts had been removed that didn't break any rules, but they were investigating what was happening, which is reassuring. I did do a search for an update on that, but we've never had one. So either they're still investigating it, or there's a bug, which means it's been hidden from public view. The most Alanis Morissette article I could find on this subject was when Facebook took down a post from Planned Parenthood offering resources for people looking for medical abortions. But before you think Planned Parenthood are the good guys in all this, we learned that their website was giving location and search data to Meta and Google through tracking cookies. When this hit the press, Planned Parenthood removed the cookies faster than Cookie Monster at a wedding with an open bar. How do the tracking cookies work? We'll get to that later in the video, me and a hat. For now, let's stay on point and talk about how Facebook has earned a Mr. Burns amount of cash running ads with misinformation about abortion pills while deleting ads from people trying to get actual information out there. Once more for the people at the back. They deleted posts which were offering people help as best they could in a crap situation and took money for adverts that contained actively misleading information about those same pills. This would be like if a fire department put out a small Yankee candle and then started a business selling flame retardant matches. All of this led to headlines like this one where police got their hands on the text chat between a mother and her daughter which showed the mum helped the child end her pregnancy. Facebook defended itself by hiding behind the fact there was a court order, because we know that Facebook loves to obey the law. Now, to be fair, this investigation did start before Roe was overturned. However, Facebook's current privacy policy says they will comply with law enforcement if they ask for your messages, so, you know, Maybe it's time to delete WhatsApp. And it's not just me saying that. The DC Attorney General said, do not use Facebook or any other unencrypted tools to plan your abortion or anything else you want to keep private, something the UK government could learn from. This brings us neatly to Google, who are also giving your data to the police. Google started strong by auto-deleting abortion clinic visits from our location history. It would be nice if they stopped tracking all of our location data, but hey, baby steps. Google then said that employees could relocate to states with abortion rights, which I guess is sort of nice of them, but it does imply that those employees are paid enough to move and they don't mind disconnecting from their communities. But hey, I'll take the not such bad news where I can get it. Meanwhile, in Google product news, more than a third of searches for abortion clinics redirected people to anti-abortion centers. And if you were poor, you'd be more likely to see fake clinic adverts. And in no shit Sherlock news, searches for move to Canada spiked 850% the day Roe was overturned. Yelp responded by adding warning labels to listings for anti-abortion centres that said these businesses offer limited medical services and may not have licensed professionals on site, which is the most passive aggressive thing I've seen a tech company do in years, and I'm here for it. Well, I'm not on social media, so 
I'm safe. Well, that's where you're wrong, me in a hat. Facebook and Google offer website tracking services, which means they know where you've been online, even on sites they don't own. How, how do you mean? Well, have you ever been searching for a new hat and then gone back to Facebook and that exact hat has been advertised to you? Yes, actually. That happened really recently. That's the Metal Pixel at work. This information is mixed in with a shadow profile or an official profile on you and boom. If the police want to know who you are or where you've been, they can ask for that data nicely. Why are you picking on social media sites? Well, why are you on the side of the people giving away your data? And secondly, I'm not. Beyond social media, license plate technology started to be installed in some states, which could be used to monitor abortion clinic visits. GOP and Big Brother united to track women seeking abortion care, and bounty hunters were given cash rewards for data or information on women seeking- Are you kidding me? Equally, period tracking apps scrabbled to update their terms of service, as women, worried their period data would land them in prison, began deleting their apps as if it was going out of fashion. And in fair play to them, but I'm still not going to use your browser news, Mozilla started adding warning labels to apps linked to reproductive health, whose privacy policy said they would share data with third parties. In response to all of this, period tracking app Flow launched an anonymous mode to fight abortion privacy concerns. Now, I'm aware that is a lot to take in, but we are coming to the turning point in the video, and it gets not good, but less shit from this point on. The FTC sued the data broker, Koshava, for selling location information linked to abortion clinics. Although a year on, that case was dismissed, but it was a good try from them. So Congress gave it a go at investigating data brokers and period tracking apps. Someone should do a YouTube video about this. It would do moderately well. We've not had an update on this, but more than 40 Democratic members of Congress asked Google nicely to stop the unnecessary collection and retention of people's location data. If only people in Congress could, I don't know, pass a law or legislate to mandate this rather than just asking nicely. This always reminds me of that episode of Super Nanny where the parent was asking the kid nicely to stop acting like a dick and the kid either actively ignored them or told her to fuck off. You have the power to shut these actions down. Why are you pretending it's beyond your control? 16 senators then wrote an open letter to the FTC to answer the question, what are you doing to protect the location data of women seeking abortion? To which the FTC responded, Meh. California then barred tech companies from adhering to abortion-related warrants issued in other states, which is a baller move until you remember that Facebook is based in California. So it kind of looks like they've given Meta the perfect excuse to not have to provide data to 99% of the American police forces. And finally, Texas pushed a law that required abortion-related content to be blocked from the internet and sales for NordVPN skyrocketed, I assume. Thankfully, this bill has yet to pass, but it hasn't yet been thrown out, so it is worth knowing about. Which brings us on neatly to what can we do about it? Well, I'm gonna search for abortion centers and download period tracking apps to ruin their algorithms. Well, me in a different hat I purchased because apparently I'm a marketeer's dream and the Metapixel's working today. For what it's worth, I thought that would work as well. In short, it will do something, but not enough. But in long, it won't do anything, and here's why. Social media algorithms will quickly recognize that I, as a man, am unlikely to be pregnant. So, searching for these keywords like abortion will go unnoticed, as I'll get excluded from the data pool that they'll pull from. Additionally, it's not based on individual search terms. Even if I search for topics like how to rob a bank or how to overthrow the government, it's not gonna trigger a raid from the FBI. But if my actions, my purchases, and my data profile indicate that I might be likely to do either of those things, one day the feds will come a-knocking. In the case of the teenager I mentioned earlier on in the video, the police unintentionally discovered her abortion-related chat logs while investigating something else. Her text showed her desire to take control over her own body. The monster. Someone looking for abortion information is not likely to just type in the word abortion. They'd be far more specific than that, and Google would use my location data to see if I followed through. And it wasn't just me searching for a term to throw off an algorithm or researching a novel. Well, what can men do to help then? Everyone, not just men, hashtag not just men, can advocate for a universal GDPR or a digital bill of rights to have some sort of control over our data. Or we could help the legends who are trying hard to overturn the overturning of Roe versus Wade. Basically, we're in a web, a worldwide web, created by social media sites and apps where our data can tell people a lot about us 
our intentions, our needs and future wants. If you want to learn more about this, I've got a full video on how Facebook uses your period tracking data to target you with different ads at different times of the month to make it more likely that you'll buy them. I also have another video which explains how data profiles work and why your individual data isn't actually that interesting to social media sites. But TLDR, if we're going to help the situation, we're going to have to do more than sitting at home typing words into a search engine, sadly. Godspeed.